This is Jason at the DVE store. I have here today the Ursa Mini 4.6K and I've loaded the latest Blackmagic Design camera software on it, version 4.0, the public beta. I thought I'd uh, just set this up and see how it looks and how it's different and hopefully how it's better from the previous software. And I uh, just wanted to give you a quick look and run through of uh, how it functions and what's available. The first thing you'll discover as you play with this is you can access a lot of the most used functions and settings from the main screen itself without having to go into the menu. Uh, for instance, if we hit here on this little icon, we get to this pop-up menu. We can turn zebras on or off and uh, set our zebra levels using this little slider. It's nice and quick. Uh, then we have our focus peaking and you can see that uh, we can turn that on or off. You can see the red highlights in Abby's hair here as they go on and off there. And what's also nice is that uh, if we double click on here, we can, we can zoom in and get a really detailed view and just kind of pan around. Looks like her lips are nicely in focus here. And one eyeball and double click to get back out of that. Back to that menu, we've got our, our built-in masks here for various aspect ratios. If we wanna, if we're gonna be cropping in post, it's nice to know, you know, while you're shooting where those lines are. So we can scroll through the various aspect ratios and get our, uh, our masks showing up here. So that's pretty handy. Here we have our we can put lower thirds, the crosshairs, uh, center dot, on or off. And then to get out of this menu, we just click somewhere in the open screen area. Frames per second, we can go in there. Again, we just have a little slider and scroll through all the available frame rates and uh, also adjust our off speed frame rate here if we want to use that. Pretty cool. Hit shutter speed and our shutter uh, speed pops up. We've got uh, availability to auto expose if we want to. Various methods. Turn that off. And of course we ended up adjusting our shutter speed so we can get back to 180 here. And then, this, no, this is really nice. This is a much, much improved feature here. If we go up to iris, we can literally just scroll through or, or use the slider, just zip right through our f-stops. So this particular lens, f1.4 is wide open. I'm just going to leave it there. We can toggle our time code between free run and record run. Uh, we've got our ISO settings here. We can just pick whatever we want. White balance, we've got presets. Daylight, tungsten, all the usual stuff. Uh, what's also nice is that we have a custom white balance where we can adjust the amount of green or magenta in the image. So I'm uh, going toward magenta here. You'll notice as I hit 50, or if I go past 50, it then flips back around and goes to negative 50, so we're into the green here. Uh, if I just want to get back to a preset, I can hit that and I'm back. There's an auto white balance, so if I have something white, I can throw it out here, hit update white balance. Of course, that looks very strange because my hand is not really white. I mean, I am pasty, but not true white. So we can go back to our preset to make that look a little better. Then we've got a little battery icon, and we can toggle that between uh, showing us the voltage and the percentage of battery power left. If we go down to the bottom of the screen here, you can see we've got our histogram, which is really nice to have that. It's nice and compact, so it's not going to get in your way. We have a little record button here. Very apparent uh, when you're recording. It's going to be hard to miss that. Uh, the record button on the camera body uh, functions in the same way. We can start and stop there, or we can start and stop here. So at any point, if you're recording and you get a fabulous performance like Abby's showing us right now, 
you can finish that and then just you swipe and you can say that was a good take I'm gonna mark that that was sweet swipe back and you're back here and you can do your next take and obviously you have a lot of other uh, things you can do in here you can set it to interior exterior day night all your metadata stuff in here your real scene take uh, your lens data is in here for some reason this is not recognizing that this is a Zeiss 50 millimeter not a Sigma but whatever I could go in and edit that if I wanted to call it whatever I want and then we got our project metadata here so we can go in and give ourselves a, a project oops <laughs> I was a little too swipey on my motion there, so. Because even if I swipe here, it takes me out of the, the menu, so gotta be careful not to swipe. So if you've got a phone where you swipe to type, it could be bad news. You can put yourself in as the director so you can feel like a big shot. Camera, camera op. So, pretty nice. Uh, you hit here and you go into the card information. Uh, it tells you how much space you have left, uh, how much time you have remaining. Lots of good info here. You obviously can format the cards. Exit out of that. And then go down here and hit the audio meters. So, so to delve in, deeper into the menu, we can go uh, hit the menu button on the camera body. Let's go to audio and see what's going on here. Okay, so we're set to XLR inputs, uh, mic inputs with phantom power. And we can make our, our uh, inputs you know, independently adjustable here. So that's nice. Um, if we go back to camera and go out of the menu, we can see that we're now picking up audio through the onboard mics. You can see the meters bouncing, some very nice looking meters. And if we click here now, we can make some quick adjustments. There we go. Uh, and this menu automatically disappears after a couple of seconds. So you got to jump right on it, make your adjustments. And it's gone. Back into our, our deeper menu, we start over here on record. We can pick our uh, codec and quality, raw, ProRes. Uh, can't get into DN DNX HR for some reason, but uh, whatever flavor of ProRes you want to record there, you can change to. Um, our resolution, right now we're on 4.6K. We can get into different aspect ratios. Uh, we've got 3K anamorphic in here, 4K DCI, Ultra HD, HD, dynamic range, video and film, project frame rate, uh, turn on and off project, or speed of recording. And again, some of this you can do from the main screen without having to go all the way in here, but uh, this gives you all the options once you go into the main menu. Some uh, memory card options in there as well. And you can see how many pages are in a given menu because of the number of little dots on the bottom. So the record menu's got three pages. Time-lapse settings, detail. Uh, you can stop recording if uh, you drop frames. So there we are. Uh, we can go to the monitor and we have separate settings for LCD, front SDI, main SDI, or all. You can decide to show the codec and resolution on the main window instead of the audio meters if you so desire. You can see that change here. I like seeing the audio meters. Screen brightness has an immediate effect, so that's pretty nice. Let's see, did we get through all those? Yeah, we just had the... Oh, yeah, we've got two pages here, so... 
Um, you can see the options here for our LCD or for our front SDI, main SDI, or all. Frame guides, guide opacity, focus color. You can change the focus peaking color, which is pretty cool. Into audio, you can set up uh, the internal microphone sensitivity, speaker volume, headphone volume, low cut filter, 15 dB, a negative 15 dB pad, date and time. Uh, you could fix that if needed. Language, uh, shutter measurement, either speed or angle, battery display. We've got more. Uh, pages we can go to. Your ATEM camera ID, this is important if you're going to be hooking this up to an ATEM switcher. It needs to be able to communicate with the camera and so that camera ID becomes uh, very important in that instance. Headset mic, program mix, reference settings. Uh, you can set your function buttons here for whatever you like. And you can control the intensity of the door LED or just turn it off. Uh, reset to factory settings. Uh, you can see that it's the 4.0 beta software that we're running. Playback uh, clips consecutively one after the other or just one clip and then stop. You can create presets here. So if you have it all set up the way you want it for a particular situation, uh, you can just name the preset, update it, and then it'll show up in here and you can you can pick your preset lookup tables you can obviously uh, load them in here um, in order to import them you need to have them on the CFAST2 card here so they can be found don't have any there now so that's a basic run through of the new camera software from Blackmagic Design I like it I think it's a definite improvement uh, it's easier to get around and see what you want. And I do love the fact that you can get to a lot of stuff quickly from the main screen here. And adjusting the iris. Super easy. Super fast. And to punch in and check your focus. Really nice and convenient. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and throw them in the comments. I've got this rig sitting here that I can always jump on and, and play with things and answer questions, and I'm happy to do that. So ask away and go ahead and subscribe while you're here. Uh, we've got more interesting and timely content coming your way. Thanks. Have a good one.